The Big Ten had a lot going on in Week 9, and we're going to cover it all here on Rising to the Occasion. Welcome in, everybody. This is Rising in the Red Zone, a Rising to the Occasion production presented by Herd at Sports. Very excited to be back here with you guys to talk some college football and recapping some of what went on in Week 9. We're going to start off with just the Big Ten in Week 9 and see what all went on because, I mean, there was a lot of big things shaping up in the Big Ten. And honestly, I think the Big Ten this year is probably the most interesting conference when you talk about how far spread out all these teams are. You know, you have teams uh, like this, you know, this past weekend, we had Washington making its way all the way out to Bloomington, Indiana. And then, of course, you have Illinois making their way all the way out to Eugene, Oregon. And we've had this kind of stuff going on all weekend. And and even one one game that we won't even get to is, uh, you know, having Rutgers go all the way out to Southern Cal. Uh, I mean, just all of the traveling in the Big Ten makes it very interesting. But then on top of that, you look at the top of the Big Ten, and the Big Ten looks like the conference that has the better teams currently. I mean, it just you look at how the Big Ten conference is matching up right now. Usually we re- revere the SEC as the best conference, but this season almost feels like the Big Ten when you're talking about teams like uh Oregon and even Indiana, which is kind of crazy to say. Uh, And then you've got Ohio State, Penn State, all ranking up there in the top. I mean, this is a a Big Ten conference that is far deeper than it's been in years past. Usually we look at the Big Ten and we just say that it's so top heavy with just Ohio State and Michigan. And then, you know, you've got the others and they're like Penn State that maybe make their way up into that area or maybe even uh, maybe even looking over at Iowa as one of those teams and and even in years past every once in a while you get a wisconsin to sneak their way in or maybe michigan state but ultimately this year the big 10 is not top heavy at all i mean you go even as far down as washington and michigan state nebraska uh, wisconsin minnesota these teams are kind of in that middle of the pack era area that i mean they they still would put up a really good fight against some of these top teams in the nation so it's really cool to look at the Big Ten, seeing the Big Ten so strong this year. And let's go ahead and start off. I'm going to start off with really just the ranked opponents, the ones that really matter in the grand scheme of things. We're about to come out with the you know the playoff rankings. We're about to dive into those and have those brought to us. Let's start off with Nebraska making their way out to Ohio State, going to Columbus, Ohio, playing in the horseshoe against the Buckeyes. This was one that I mean I, I came out in our show on Saturday morning and said. I just don't have faith in Nebraska right now, and I'm just not sure. And I feel like Ohio State's trying to to do something. I thought for sure that Ohio State was going to try to prove something. You know, they lost to Oregon earlier on in this season, and I, I, I truly felt like Ohio State was going to come out and make a big statement. And, of course, Nebraska also wants to make a statement because they just got done being beat uh, by Indiana the week before. And, I mean, that, that was a, a – Big time beat down. Indiana beat them 56 to 7. And and that was a, a game that they did not want to lose. They they couldn't really afford to lose if they wanted to keep on going forward. And now, you know, that you come against you, you come in here against Ohio State in their home stadium, one of the biggest and baddest stadiums in all the nation, uh, and and one of the toughest places to play all over the country. It's but you know, specifically in the Big Ten. This is not an easy feat for Nebraska. And so I didn't have faith in Nebraska to be able to pull it off. I think a lot of Nebraska fans started feeling down about their team after getting whooped by Indiana just a week ago. And they come in here and and they they came into Columbus with a mission. Going into halftime, it was 14-6. to And I feel like the energy felt like Nebraska thinks that they can do this. And... You, you go a little further into the game, and Nebraska only gets a field goal, but, I mean, now they're sitting there at 9-14. to 14. They're only five points behind. They're feeling pretty good about their chances here. Uh, they're starting to look good. They're starting to feel good. And, and all game, they were they were holding uh, Ohio State to on, on the run game. They were not allowing Ohio State to run the ball at all, and so they were very one-dimensional. And, of course, they were able to get the, get the job done towards the end, but ultimately uh, – Ohio State was only able to, to rush for 64 yards on the ground. 64 yards. That's only 2.1 yards per attempt. Uh, this Nebraska defense, they they took it to heart when Indiana, just a week ago, lined up to 
run the ball into the end zone on them, not just once, not just twice, but five times after Nebraska was boasting about their stat that they had not allowed a single rushing touchdown all season long up to that point. And then, of course, at that time, then uh, Indiana exposed them. They were able to get uh, one into the end zone. But then now Nebraska coming into this week against against Ohio State, standing tall against that run game and, again, not allowing a rushing touchdown against this Ohio State team, who, let's be honest, with Quinshaw Judkins and Trayvon Henderson, uh, this is a tough team of tough, tough couple of running backs, two two headed monster back there in the backfield. Very tough to stop them. So very impressive for this Nebraska team, this Nebraska defense and what they're able to do. And even going into the fourth quarter, they scored a touchdown, went for two. Now they're up 17 to 14 with uh, about 10 minutes left in the game. And even after that, less than 10 minutes left in the game. And, you know, that this was this was big for Nebraska. I mean, you know, it, it felt like they might be able to pull this off. But then, of course, that stat gets brought up on the TV. And the same thing that we've seen from a Nebraska team time and time again is we're close to a, a team that we should be able to beat right now. The way that this game has gone, we should be able to beat them. We've been better on defense. Uh, as long as we can just sustain a drive, maybe march it down there slowly and score one more touchdown, we're able to win this game and win a big game. But yet again, the Huskers fall short, and it just seems like a curse that they just can't get over. And I know Nebraska fans hate that. Nebraska fans absolutely hate the fact uh, that it comes down to that. And then, of course, uh, you know, the last drive for this Nebraska offense, Dylan Raiola throws an interception. Uh, you know, you, you come down to the you know, where, where it was, uh, let's see, about four minutes left in the game, and Nebraska's up. I mean, they're feeling really good about themselves right now with four minutes left in the game. And, you know, and, and looking at where they're at and recognizing what they've done on defense. And then Ohio State answers the very next drive to go down there, eight plays, 75 yards to score a touchdown to go ahead. And, of course, I think, uh, you know, looking at how Will Howard played in this game, I think he played pretty well other uh, outside of his interception, going 13-16, almost a perfect game from him. Uh, 221 yards, uh, three touchdowns. And throwing that one interception, but you know, outside of that, uh, and, and that interception really hurt them in a bad moment. But they bounced back. He bounced back, and they were able to go down there, and they were able to score again there in the last drive uh, because of Will Howard and, and the way that he performed in this game. And I think a lot of criticism towards Will, Will Howard whenever they lost to Oregon, and specifically that last play there. But he went forward and he did a very good job here today. Uh, you know, or uh, this this week, and then Carnell Tate uh, the the wide receiver that was really getting it done. I mean, this guy, he had four receptions, 102 yards and a touchdown. And of course, we know that these these wide receivers for Ohio State are phenomenal. They're great at getting open, getting their hands on the ball. But he had a 25 and a half yard average and, and a 40 yard long. I mean, that, that was the story of this Ohio State offense. And the Achilles heel of this Nebraska defense was the huge chunk plays. I mean, you, you talk about these big plays through the air. There was a 40-yard pass play, a 60-yard pass play, uh, and then a few other chunk plays here and there that that Ohio State was able to get off. And it all came it came down to this, you know, with, with Carnell Tate being able to do what he did, uh, you know, with, like I said, 25-and-a-half-yard average, but then 23-yard uh, average from Jeremiah Smith, the freshman, I mean, this was just a, an offensive clinic from these wide receivers, keeping their offense in the game and, again, scoring there on the last drive, getting themselves to that last drive. So Ohio State ended up winning that one 21-17, to keeping their, their hopes alive for a, a Big Ten championship, a national championship. This week they have to go against Penn State. We are going to touch on Penn State in just a moment, so I'm going to hold off on getting to that. Let's go to the next game real quick first and talk about the Indiana Hoosiers. This is a team that I've been bragging about since before the season even started, but I didn't imagine it being this good. You know, I never would have imagined that we'd be t talking about a number 13 ranked Indiana team who is 8-0 and and has true hopes of a conference championship and a college football playoff berth that could lead to a national championship. I, I, nobody would have would have guessed this. And it's it's very obvious. And I knew Kurt Signetti. I thought that was a really good hire. As soon as I saw that that was made, I thought that was a, a great hire for them, getting Kurt Signetti in the door. And then, of course, what he did 
with this Indiana team, going after the transfer portal in a specific way, bringing in specific guys who had started either two or three years, not just played for two to three years, but he wanted starters on his team, guys who had the on-field experience and that were able to contribute. They were able to contribute right away. They were able to get their hands on the football and do something with it right away. And that's exactly what he did. Uh, bringing in a guy like uh, like Rourke, being able to, to be the, the star QB that he's turned out to be. And of course, this week he was, he was injured with that thumb, uh, had to have surgery on it. And Taven Jackson comes in and he didn't have an outstanding game, 11 for 19, really good uh, you know, efficiency, just being able to, to maintain and not turn the ball over too much. He did have an interception, but 124 yards and a touchdown didn't have the, the wildest stats, but they were able to do enough everywhere else, you know, six and a half yard average through the air. And then, of course, just giving it to Ch- Justice Ellison, who's been a monster all season long for them. 29 carries, just feeding him the rock. And he got himself 123 yards and a touchdown on the day. I, I mean, this was just something that they were able to lean on. They were able to lean on that run game and control the time of possession. Uh, and ultimately, Indiana just did did a phenomenal job holding the defense too. the defense looking the way that they did all game long, keeping this offense in the game. And the offense didn't have to do anything special again without Kyle Rourke in the game, just being able to, to rely on Jackson just to do just enough to win this game. Uh, the defense held Washington, Washington to only three of 11 on third down, uh, you know, conversions and then uh one of three on fourth down conversions. So just an outstanding job from this defense overall, just doing what they needed to do to help and be complimentary to the, uh, to the, the, uh, the, the offense for this Indiana Hoosiers team and Bloomington is blowing up right now. You know what? And, and, and this upcoming week, Indiana, they've got one more game. You know, they've got this Michigan state game where they've got one more game where I feel like it's a pretty, Simple game. They should be able to take care of business just fine. I know they go up to East Lansing, but they should be able to take care of business. And then they've got to host Michigan to come into their house there in Bloomington. I expect that to be a very big game. And then they go travel about three and a half hours east over to Columbus and to try to take on the Buckeyes. And I mean, if they were able to take down the Buckeyes, you're talking about a conference championship caliper uh, you know, team here. And and not on, not only that, but a national championship caliper team. And Indiana's looking at it at a conference championship and a lock into the college football playoff if they're able to beat Ohio State. Now, I'm not going to jump ahead and, and say that they can beat Ohio State, but I do think they can beat Michigan State. I think they can beat Michigan. Ohio State's probably the one that I give them a loss. And then Purdue, I mean, you're looking at an 11-1 and Indiana Hoosiers team. This is just incredible to talk about, and I love it. Uh, I, I grew up for most of my life, most of my childhood in Indiana. And so personally, I, I love this for them. I love this for the program. I love it for all of my Indiana friends uh, back back where I would say back home uh, and, and all of those Hoosier fans that are able to cheer on this team and seeing where they're at right now. I mean, this is just absolutely incredible. And I, I, I love to see this kind of parody because of what NIL and the transfer portal has done. So, I mean, you can you can talk bad about it, and it is frustrating to see the transfer portal and NIL taking over college football the way that it has. But this team, this Indiana team, is one example of where it's gotten college football to be a little bit better in some, some ways. But let's go ahead and move on. Indiana doing an amazing job, still undefeated, 8-0. Uh, just absolutely crazy to see there. But another undefeated team the number one team in the nation the Oregon Ducks were able to take down the Ohio State Buckeyes and secure that number one spot they host Illinois the fighting Illini and bring them in and Dylan Gabriel just had an an amazing game again uh, 18 for 26 291 yards three touchdowns he also had a rushing touchdown on the day was able to do just about everything he wanted to do Uh, and then of course looking over there you know what he's got in Tez Johnson uh, he had a phenomenal Phenomenal game to six receptions, 100 yards, uh, sorry, 102 yards, and then also a touchdown on the day. I mean, Oregon was just rolling on offense, and this defense is finally starting to look like a Dan Lanning physical defense. And and that's ultimately what did it for this Oregon Ducks team. And, of course, got to love those bright yellow uniforms, right? Uh, they've, they've got some of the coolest uniform combos in all of uh, you know all of college football 
Um, but overall, this offense, they were just efficient. They were able to keep a hold of the ball, uh, you know, and really handle time of possession. Uh, that, that's really all they've got to do. And then, of course, just the one turnover with an interception thrown by Dylan Gabriel, uh, one that he wishes he could have back. Um, but then, you know, outside of that, I mean, they were able to rack up 527 yards while allow, allowing less than 300 yards on defense. I mean, this is the Dan Landing uh, kind of Oregon team that we were expecting to see whenever we came into this season. They were averaging uh, over 10 and a half yards per pass play, you know, per, per pass attempt. Uh, so that was one thing that I, I thought, you know, just seeing how efficient that passing game was, but then also almost six yards per rushing attempt. So, I mean, they were just efficient in every way, every, every way that they could be uh, and, and only allowing less than four and a half yards per play against Illinois. And so, I mean, this was just an Oregon team that we expected to see for, to, at, at the beginning of the season. A lot of us were projecting that Oregon was going to be one of those national championship contending teams because of the way that they're playing right now. And we expected this earlier in the season. Of course, they went through some adversity adversity to get to the point where they're at. But then after that Ohio State win and, and the way that they played in that game, we're starting to see a different Oregon team. And they came out on the field this past Saturday uh, and they really showed up then. And, and of course, we expect them to keep on going with that momentum. So Oregon's still number one team in the nation and number one really in the Big Ten as well. But let's go ahead and jump on to the last game we're going to recap here, kind of give our reactions, and that's Penn State because they also remain unbeaten. We've got three teams in the Big Ten that are still unbeaten. I, I, I believe the, the best conference out of all of the conferences. I mean, let, let's pull up the standings real quick just to make sure. Let's see. We've got three, four, five. I, I mean, you, you've, you've got – yeah, I mean, so you've got three undefeated teams – in the Big Ten, I mean, this is this is a very good Big Ten, uh, you know, conference this year. I mean, looking looking at everything that you've got here with with uh, the rankings, the, the current AP poll dropped. You've got one, two, three in the top five, three three Big Ten teams in the top five. Only Georgia is the SEC team in the top five, and then Miami from the ACC ranking at number five. I mean, this this is a Big Ten conference that's just different than they have been in years past, and we have to admit that. We have to admit that this is a very good, you know, overall uh, Big Ten conference. Uh, and so, I mean, it's 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 very crazy to see how much the momentum has shifted from from the SEC. And I feel like not necessarily taking anything away from the SEC. I think the AC the at the SEC is just a little deeper. And that's why you, you've got teams like Texas and, and Georgia playing against each other and, you know, Georgia being Texas, um, but then also Alabama beating Georgia. And then, of course, uh, Tennessee also beating Alabama. So you've got all of this parity over in the SEC, not taking anything away from the, uh, the SEC, but you're seeing a less top-heavy Big Ten, as we mentioned a minute ago. And jumping over to the Penn State Nittany lines and what they've been able to do, just kind of quietly – creeping their way up towards the top. This is a team that really nobody's talking about the fact that Penn State is 7 and 0 going into uh you know having to to host Ohio State. They they're not going to Columbus. They're they're hosting Ohio State in what I assume would be a wideout game. It's going to be the biggest game of the season for both of these teams uh to the to date. And you know, it, this is a Penn State team that has just again slowly and quietly been creeping their way up in the rankings and Nobody even realizes that they're number three in the nation right now. This is going to be a big time matchup, uh, you know, and it's it's crazy to to think about what where this week is going with Ohio State. You've got a number three Penn State against the number four Ohio State. That's where we're at this week, and you know it's it's going to be big news, and and it's finally going to expose Penn State whether they're legitimately a, a contender and legitimately deserve to be number three. Or is Ohio State going to be able to go in there and beat them? Based on what I saw this past weekend, Penn State going up to Camp Randall and just doing whatever they needed to do. And Ohio State struggled against a struggling Nebraska team. Uh, looking over at Drew Aller, almost a perfect game going 14 of 18, 148 yards and a touchdown. Didn't turn the ball over one bit. And of course, they you know Penn State always has their their two-headed monster in the backfield between Catron Allen and Nicholas Singleton. Uh, Catron Allen seemed to be getting a little bit, uh, you know, 
more he had the more efficient carries he he had one less carry but more efficient about 7.8 yards per carry uh, 86 yards and 11 uh, 11 attempts and then uh, he got himself a touchdown as well and you know he's able to get some chunk plays in there you know that's that's the way you do it as a running back and this is just a, a scary Penn State offense that's able to just methodically and slowly march the ball down and score on you and they're able to they're also able to turn that into a faster paced offense so they're not just only that slow running offense that you know maybe we think of maybe a an Iowa or a Michigan the way that they are but this is a team that that can both slowly and methodically march it down the field and they can move fast enough to hurry up and score in a, in a, in a hurry if they need to. So, I mean, it's, it's a, a scary offense. And then of course this defense doing what they're able to do all season long. Uh, it, it's, it's been a really good Penn state defense and against Wisconsin. Of, of course, we don't really revere Wisconsin as, as being one of the better offenses, but still holding them to just less than 300 total yards uh, and only 81 yards on the ground. I mean, this is a Wisconsin team that's really known for being able to run the ball. And Tawi Walker, he had 22 carries, only able to get 59 yards out of those 22 carries. He was able to get into the end zone one time. But this is this is Tawi Walker, who's been qu- kind of quietly having a really big season, at least the last three or four weeks. So, you know, this is this is big for this Penn State team to have a big win on the road against Wisconsin, build that confidence. And of course, they just beat USC on the road uh, a week ago, and they did that by in a comeback fashion as well. So this is a Penn State team that's just been building momentum where Ohio State seems like they've almost been regressing a little bit from what we saw in the beginning of the season. Uh, not to take anything away from Ohio State, I think Ohio State would probably still be the favorite. I mean, I, I can look this up really quick just to see. Yeah, Ohio State four point favorite at Penn State. I, I mean, o- Ohio State's the favorite still, but this is a Penn State team again. Like I said, that has been slowly progressing and getting better week in and week out. So it's going to be very interesting, and this is going to really shape up the Big Ten quite a bit because you look at the Big Ten. Like I said, you've got Oregon, Penn State, and Indiana all undefeated. And really, Indiana and Oregon, uh, with one extra game so far in the season, they they are both above Penn State at this moment. So, I mean, regardless, uh, it it just bumps. If Ohio State were able to to win, it would bump them up ahead of Penn State for that contention and hoping to beat Indiana. If Ohio State loses this game, they would have two losses, and even with a win against Indiana, this still doesn't get them anywhere. Uh, And also, Ohio State kind of has a pretty tough road ahead when you talk about Indiana. Not going to be an easy team to beat. Uh, And then, of course, at the end of the season, you've got the big rivalry, having to play the team up north and uh, having to host Michigan this year. So this year it should be at the shoe. But, you know, it's not an easy road ahead for Ohio State in any regard. So, you know, they, they... as much as, as it pains me to say, Ryan Day is on the hot seat because of where he's at and the way that the, the, that school and that, those, that fan base has been talking. If he were to lose this week and, and lose a second one, and now you're basically out of, you're, you're out of the driver's seat and, and contention for the Big Ten, uh, you have to have a little bit more chaos if you lose this week. And then if you were to lose this, uh, you know, maybe you win this week, but then you lose to Indiana – also putting yourself in that situation. I mean, this is this is bad news for Ohio State. So they really have to win out with a pretty tough road ahead. So it's going to be interesting to see what Ohio State's got going for them. But ultimately, uh, you know, Penn State right now, that's who's on the road. Uh, that's who's uh, kind of on your your next, uh, you know, the, on next for your schedule. Excuse me. But, uh, you know, looking at Penn State, like I said, just the way that they progressively got better It wouldn't surprise me if we saw an upset here with a Penn State coming out ahead of Ohio State. But this is also an Ohio State team that can score at will against just about any defense that they go against. And is Penn State's offense good enough to keep on going? Because this is also an Ohio State defense that who seems like they keep on proving themselves to be one of the better defenses in all of the nation. But that's all we got for you today. Uh, college football week nine in the Big Ten was a very fun one. Very excited to, to be able to get through the rest of the conferences, take a look at some of these top games and see what happened and what's going to be happening, seeing kind of how everything's shaping out to be 
around in the college football world. But appreciate everybody so much for tuning in. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, you can find everything we do at rising2.com. Follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, X, formerly known as Twitter, all of that fun stuff. So go check us out over there. Appreciate all of you for, ch- for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.